Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. For today's video, we're going to be looking at an analog device that can measure temperature. It's called an LM35 Precision Centigrade Temperature Sensor. That's right off the data sheet. Uh, I've been using these, uh, I'll show you here on the camera what it looks like. I've been using these for several decades now. I vaguely remember writing this on this package, and it was probably a package of 20 or 30 of them, uh, on all the way back about 30 years ago when I was building a small CNC machine, a desktop CNC machine. And uh, I remember using these to monitor temperatures on the machine uh, during the design phase. So I've had these for quite a while and I've used quite a few of them over the years. The package is a TO92, uh, looks just like a transistor, got three legs coming out the bottom. And uh, the way it is on my breadboard here is with the flat side towards us. And that'll be the same way we've got it as shown in the uh, Fritzing diagram. Now, before we go into that, let's take a quick look at the data sheet. Uh, this is a Texas Instruments data sheet. It's calibrated directly in Celsius. And it's very linear uh, for every 10 millivolts it's a degree in Celsius. So there's a very strong correlation between uh, millivolts and the temperature that it reports. Uh, the, it's rated for full negative 55 C to 150 C range, but you have to wire it up with negative voltages. And that's a little out of the scope for what we're trying to present today. Its operating voltage is from 4 volts to 30 volts. Uh, the output on it uh, via analog is only going to uh, reach that very maximum voltage at the very high temperatures. So if we're in that 5 volt, powering it with 5 volts, we'll be plenty safe if we don't get anywhere near 150 degrees Celsius. As mentioned, it's a TO92 uh, package, and uh, this is essentially how we're wiring it. This would be how you would wire it if you're using the full voltage range, or the full uh, temperature range, measuring into the negative degrees. And we'll come down. This is what the package would look like uh, with the pin numbering. Uh, we're actually working with it uh, with this flat surface facing forward, so it's a little more confusing there. And then uh, the pin numbers here correlate to the drawing there, so you know that uh, pin number two is your voltage out for your analog output, uh, ground is pin three, and input voltage or supply voltage is pin number one. And that's really all we really need, I think, off of that. We'll take a quick peek at uh, the Fritzing diagram, and it could not be more simple. We've got our Pico. We've got the LM35. Uh, we've got power uh, coming out of, I'm showing here at 3.3 volts. I've run it at both 3.3 and at 5 volts. Behavior is identical. Uh, but on the breadboard, I'm keeping it at 5 volts uh, just so I can further test it. Uh, but either way, go either 3.3 or 5 volts out to your power rail, and then that would go into this pin. And this surface here is the flat surface of the LM35. And that'll help you with your orientation. Ground is on the far right, coming out, going to the ground rail, back to the Pico, and into a ground input on the Pico. From our analog to digital channel zero, we're going to come out and go over and connect to the metal pin. And that's all that we've really got here on the actual breadboard uh, with the wires just uh, not quite as neat and tidy. Going to the code, uh, I've got some commentary at the top uh, where I'm going to explain uh, its range, etc., supply voltage, which we just discussed. Um, 
And then uh, I'm making a note here that uh, the temp has averaged over 10 samples uh, measured a tenth of a second apart. Uh, and frankly, in truth, that's even almost too frequent. Temperature doesn't change that much, but these sensors are very sensitive and they do fluctuate. Uh, stability and voltage, uh, everything can affect the reading that you're going to get on the analog of this. Uh, so you do get some fluctuation, and if we do a sampling of 10 and average it, we get uh, get it moderated better, so you get a little more truth in that reading. Uh, we are going to work with both Celsius and Fahrenheit at the final output. We're going to import the machine library and a, a time library. Uh, are, we're going to set up our analog reading uh, for the LM35 on the analog to digital channel zero. And I'm going to use this offset value variable. Uh, I call it calibration offset. A lot of times in uh, analog, you're not going to get a perfect base reference point. And uh, so what you do, you set it up and compare it to another known standard. In this case, I've got a fairly accurate a digital thermometer over on the desk behind me, and I use that to calibrate it. And that calibration offset is going to be applied to the analog value coming in. So 500 might seem like a lot, but in truth, uh, when you break it down into millivolts and into uh, the conversion factor, it's a very small amount of calibration. We'll skip over the function for a moment. We'll come back to that. Uh, but we've got uh, another variable here called samples, and that'll hold our 10 samples after we collect them. And then the number of samples, how we're going to keep track if we've got 10 samples or not. We're going to go into a typical main loop uh, that's endless. Our first decision is to see if we've got, uh, our counter is up to 10 yet. If it's not, uh, then we're going to execute this code and we're going to take a reading from the sensor. We're going to add that reading value here to the existing value in samples by using this line. And then we'll increment our counter. We'll come down. Uh, if this decision uh, wasn't true, that means we're going to execute the else statement. Uh, we're going to take our average analog value by getting samples divided by 10. We'll reset that uh, to empty, and we'll reset our counter. And then we're going to have the variables T underscore C and T underscore F to uh, store the returning Celsius reading and Fahrenheit reading from this function where we pass it in the average analog value. So now we'll jump up to there. Uh, we're going to uh, apply that uh, our calibration offset to our average analog value. So we're immediately apply that in this line. Now we're going to convert this analog value or analog reading into voltage. And we do that with this. We take LM35A, that value, times 0. 0.00005. That will give us the voltage being read at that port or at that analog to digital channel. Then the calculation for the temperature in Celsius is simply the round of the voltage times 100 and we'll round that to one decimal place. The temperature in Fahrenheit, I'm just converting using the traditional, for us Americans, uh, the conversion that we always use. Temperature in C times 1.8 plus 32 rounded to one decimal place. We return those two variables down to here, and then finally we're going to print it down below here so that we can see uh, what our sensor is reading. And we'll run it, and you'll see our readings here. We've got uh, 21 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Pretty much comfortable no matter where in the world you are. Those are pretty comfortable temperatures. 
Now what I'll try to do is I'll try to get a little more heat into that chip. Uh, I'll try to pinch it with my cold fingers here and see if the temperature comes up. Here we go. Uh, 73 degrees. Uh, give a little more. Not much. 73.8, 73, and it's starting to drop. So now I'll let go of it, and we'll see the temperature slowly go back down again. It is fairly responsive. Um, if you were to hit it with a, a soldering iron, get close to it, you would definitely see the temperature rising uh, and falling very rapidly uh, with that extreme change. So as you can see, the LM35 is a wonderful very simple to use uh, temperature sensor, analog temperature sensor. Uh, hopefully you've been enlightened a little bit about it and what, how to use it and what it's useful for, measuring temperature. That'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.